Uh, Delinquent Nation, Prison Diaries. We're back. I got my friend Lee Marvin Hitchman here. Yes. What's dude. going on, bro? It's been a long time well, coming. Man, finally, we linked up. Finally, you've come all the way down from Manchester. Thank I you did for coming indeed, down. Yeah. Um, I know you, journey. You, you, yeah, I know you've got a wild, crazy yeah. story. Insane. You know, we're gonna get into bits and pieces. Yeah. Um, and, and we're gonna really focus on your prison life. Yeah, we are. We're gonna do something different, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know you've got a book called Born in Prison. I we'll am talk indeed. about that later. Yeah, man. Um but that's where I wanna start. Like yeah. you was born in prison. That that's that's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy, G. I honest. don't know anyone that's been born in prison. Yeah. Well, you know what? I don't myself, you know. <laughs> um I don't know when I found out though. I was think I was about I heard the whispers, you know, like my my adoptive mum and dad was whispering to each other, like, yeah, he was born, you know, it was being a bit naughty and stealing and stuff. Yeah. And that's where the whispers were heard, oh, I was born in prison, you know what I mean? I thought, wow, you know, because I knew I was picked, so I knew I was special anyway, you know yeah. what I mean? And then when I was like realised I was actually born in prison, it was like, wow, that is crazy. That is that, that that is that's that's mind blowing. Yeah. So you was in you was obviously in the care system because of that. Yeah, so what happened was is she she was being told um when you say she, me, my, my, my mum, my birth yeah. mum. Your, your biological mum. Yeah, yeah, she was in prison. She was from North London, actually. Word. Um, so she went to prison for a charge and she was doing 12 months. So she had to do six. And um, what, she was heavily pregnant with me. So she was in a mother and baby, on the mother and baby unit yeah, in style yeah. women's prison, yeah. And for some reason, they was telling her if she gave me away for adoption, sign me up, I would be given to two doctors. So she they told was, her that. yeah, so she was being torn by that. You know what I mean? So obviously she must have been sat there an addict thinking a better life. I'm gonna be giving him a better life. You know what I mean? His dad's an addict as well. Of late, I found out in life that my dad was an addict. So my dad was in prison as well. So not only was I born in prison to so my mum, my dad was also in custody at wow. the same time. Wow. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, you know, it wasn't. She didn't have good options. You know. So when she signed all that paperwork, when she came home. She finally signed me away. I was like nine months old, 15 months old when I had the paperwork was so, signed. So just as she went in on that bird, she had you like a few months later? Yeah, yeah, she must have had me in. So she went on the mother of baby unit, then she was released from custody, left me in it up, up mm. in not in Manchester. And then I went to- Sorry to cut you, but do you, yeah. do you, do you know, do you know how that works? Like, so you said the mother and baby unit. Like, yeah. so um, do you know how that whole process works you, when you come into prison pregnant? I'm not sure, you know, I don't know the ins and outs of it too mm. much, you know what I mean? I just know she would have been on like a ward with like other, other pregnant mothers, you know what I mean? And she was Do you know how taught. long they're allowed to, um, the mother's allowed to have you on I the think unit? It's a, I think it's about um, four months or three months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it was three months. Um, an ex, an ex prison officer told me a couple of years ago, I spoke to him about it, and he said it was a good, um, it allowed a few months on the wing, you know what I mean, with the kids. Yeah. So she must have been torn, you know, very torn by having to sign that paperwork eventually, imagine, yeah. you know. But she was in London when she did that. And what was interesting is she never named my dad on the paperwork, she gave a different name to him. So of late, I found out this guy who I've met later on in my life is potentially my dad. I don't know for sure because he never mm. turned up for a DNA test when he could have come. So I don't know 100%, but what I do know is he looks like me, you know what I mean? And he's saying mm. he's my dad, so... But she never named him. She put a different name on on, the, on all the paperwork to probation, you know, which I found interesting, you know what I mean? Mm. And when I met him, it was just the crazy... He told me the craziest story. Anyway, he said to me, Oh, son... It's lucky you never get came to landing with us anyway, because you'd have been dead. So I said, mm -hmm. why, what do you mean? Dead, and he went, I was in the house with your mum one day and we was all taking drugs. And the, the girl had a baby and the baby, I woke up and I, the baby was blue in the cot. And, no. he, and he did this action, he went, the baby was blue in the cot. He did that sign? Yeah, he did this action, like the baby was blue in the cot. Wow. Pick the baby up. And I was like, wow. This guy's think, just told me that, you know? I think everything has to a reason, bro. And I, and I think, yeah, and I think yeah. I think that he's really, probably really right. Does. Like, you know, if, if you, you know, I'm not, I'm, yeah. I'm not saying anything yeah, against your mum. Yeah, I don't think mom, he's far, that far but, from the but, truth. But yeah, like, you know, it had yeah. she, if she continued being like a user like yeah, that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you never know what was that would have happened. Yeah, so exactly, I don't think yeah. he was far from telling the truth, you know? Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think 
I wish she would have kept me, you know, because I had a bad, bad upbringing regardless, you know what I mean? Oh, word. Nothing would have, nothing would have been worse than what, what she would have, what I went through, you know what I mean? Because I had it rough because my dad was a Jamaican adopted man. He was a Jamaican man. He was very, very strict, yeah. extremely strict over nothing, very angry all the time in himself. And like I'd have accidents at school or I'd weed a bed and stuff and I'd get a beating for it, you know what I mean? Mm. And that's obviously not the way to do it. And I asked him later on and he, he didn't know any other way, you know, he was a simple minded mm. man, you know? And um, so he, he, he didn't, he not, I forgive him because I, he didn't he'd know any other way, mm. you know? So that's why uh, he, he kind of dragged me up still. Yeah, I, you know, yeah. it's controversial, but at the same time, that, that's how I was raised, you know? And that's I was raised it. by J Jamaican as well, yeah, you know? Yeah, and very strict, it can be very strict. Yeah, can't it? but it's like, you can take it in two ways, like, yeah. you know, because that punishment or yeah. dis discipline. Yeah. Sometimes you need it. All right, so, but here's, here's but what, let me just cut you in. That was good for you because that was your mum and dad giving you that discipline. It's my what grand, was yeah. frustrating me was it wasn't. it's not my blood. Yeah, He's yeah. beating me and I'm thinking, this is not my dad. Yeah. He's not my real dad, you know what I mean? Like he should have had that restraint to think, you know, but it's was, not but, blood, you know what I mean? No, no, I hear that, but was you, was you, was you conscious of that because it's like growing up, a lot of people that have been adopted. Yeah, and, and, you kind of forget the parents. Yeah, kind of forget. You, that is your that, that is now your your yeah, mum and dad. I you know that, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not going against your yeah, point. No, or anything. I think I'm just that's what to... he thought as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. And sometimes, like yeah. you know, you see with these old school people, especially if he's born in Jamaica or yeah, whatever. Yeah, he, he, they know tough love. That's that's how they that's it's, they it's deal tough. with it crazy, yeah, don't they? Yeah, I mean, that's how he was raised. Yeah, I mean, even I mean, even my girlfriend when she was pregnant. Wow. Like me, okay, her, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's going too far. Yeah. Me and I was arguing and he smacked her and like, you know, just to calm, he said to me it was to calm her down. Yeah, that's why. Like yeah. they do it, like he said, like they did years ago. They used to smack a woman around mm, the face to yeah. calm her down, G. That's, that's wild, yeah. I yeah. went crazy, you know what I mean? It yeah. caused lots of ruptions, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. that was his way was set like that, do you know what I mean? He's still alive now, but he's in a care home now. But, you know, that's another story. Like, um, that's it's crazy. funny though, because... I'll just say this quickly. Uh, he used to beat me for wee in the bed. And then, so I'm living with him and he's having accidents and I'm having to find that respect yes. in humanity yeah. and the dignity to clean him and wash him. And I'm thinking, like, you never did that for me when I was a wow, kid. Wow, yeah. Taking my underpants off gently <laughs> and my trousers yeah. and helping me. Yeah, you never yeah. did that to oh, me. Oh, how the tables have turned. Oh, that's, uh, that's exactly it, yeah. yeah. And I think that was a bit of karma for him, that. Yeah, I think that was a bit of a lesson learning a for him. A hundred percent, man. You know, um, you know what I mean. I've um, I was yeah. speaking about this earlier on today. I, I was interviewed earlier, and uh, it's funny how the world works because I I used to be a bad gambler. Yeah, you know, and that's what got me into like robbing bookies and right, doing all this right. all this madness. Yeah. I was a very bad gambler. Yeah, and I was myself when I was a teen. So you know how it is. Yeah, it's yeah, really I know bad. Exactly what it's like. It's, it's really bad. Yeah. These, these bookies and casinos and yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the maddest thing is, yeah, like. I was a bad gambler and that basically got me into like, I, I was robbing these shops and yeah. da, 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 doing all this foolishness, did yeah. a lot of time in jail. Yeah, yeah. And then... But it's easy to rob them machines. Once they take your money, you can get into that zone where you just think, I'm just going to boot this machine Yeah, because you it. feel like you've just been robbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> so when I was younger, the machines literally, you could just rip them the bottoms off and take the money. Yeah, That's what the yeah, kids yeah, would do, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But what, what my point was like, um, mm. like, I, like I did the Channel 4 thing, mm. And when it came out on TV and William Hill sponsored it, bro. Oh my God. So in a roundabout way, it, it's just how the, like the world works. It's a like, old world, yeah. Yeah. And like, like you said, it's, it's, it's similar to like, you know, you used to get beat for um, we in the bed, bed and then, I've got and then now he's in the care home. Yeah. You know, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's, it's crazy, it. man. And, and I respect you for maybe not doing the same thing to him you could have just you could just leave him out you know nah, what I mean? you know what I'd even i went and we went and bought him loads of um pajamas and winter wear you know for now and i had to go up the other day to see him at the care home you know what i mean and it is difficult going to see him because bro i've got a frontal low brain tumor and i was on an end of life ward yeah word they thought i was dying and my dad wouldn't even come up and see me my girlfriend was having to go to him and say look you know your son's on a dead life end of life ward and he didn't want to come up and see me, man. He thought I was dying, and um, you know. And a few years before that, um, my girlfriend was in my sister's hairdressers one day, 
And when oh, where's Marvin's girlfriend? And he went, who's Marvin? So he disowned me, you know what I mean, when I was on drugs. So when yeah. I got back talking to him and that, when I got clean, you know, our relationship was kind of tough, you know? And I asked him, like, why did you used to beat me and stuff when I was a kid and stuff? And, like, why did you used to go to go a bit... For? And, like, he used to just... He, he had no answers for it, you know what I mean? And he didn't just used to beat me. He used to beat one of my mum's friends. One of her... They had, like, four kids. And one of her girls used to get beat off my dad as well. No way. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. like, and social services got involved and told him to stop and all that. He told me that story, you know what I mean? I was gobsmacked when he told me that. So yeah, he was a bit crazy, and then. So obviously, you know, I don't need to say it, but that is that's obviously PTSD. That's trauma, isn't it? Yeah. I think that's called complex PTSD. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, like if you look into that, yeah, you you definitely would have that yeah. definitely would have affected your behaviours. Yeah. And, and growing up, you yeah, know, of course, yeah, dealing with all of that stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, yeah, he used to embarrass me sometimes, like he'd beat me in front of my friends and stuff. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and that was yeah, embarrassing, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think you're a big man to all your mates, aren't you? And yeah. your dad comes and brings you down to earth and yeah. beats you around the street. That's horrible, man. Do you, yeah. So, obviously, it goes without saying, but do, do you feel that do you feel that impacted you growing up? I think it did, you know, because I was, um, I was always what in stealing and stuff you know what i mean i was a comfort eater so i used to steal things for comfort you know bright mm. things and shiny things you know mm. what i mean and hide them and keep them close to me and all that yeah so i think yeah i think i recognize that i'd lost a lot in my life so i was trying to scrape it back do you know what i mean but i didn't respect him for beating me like that at all you know but mm. as the years have got on now i've just tried to deal with it like you say you either live with it or you lump it don't you type mm. thing do you know what i mean but it definitely affected my behaviors growing up of I'd course say man. So. Of course, and yeah. you know, um, I can't lie. It's like you've been through it, man. You know, I've seen I've seen a lot of your stuff as well, and I know I know, yeah. you, I know you've I know you've. Um, well, yeah, I was I got convicted for theft at fourteen, street robberies, uh, robbery for fourteen. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, street robbing in the city centre. You know, following all the crowds and stuff. You know, we seeing other people robbing, <laughs> so you get your. You get your hat robbed and you think, yeah, I'm going to go robbing as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Before yeah. you know it, I was a street robber convicted. Where, where did you grow up? Manchester? Grew up in Manchester. Yeah, yeah. And it was a it was a good time, but very quickly Manchester became Gunchester. Yeah. But yeah. very dark. Yeah, yeah. In the early 90s, it was a very, very dark place, you know. There was a lot of shootings and a lot of killings. Uh and me, unfortunately, I got into crack cocaine just as, like, the gun crime era started, you know? Yeah. So I um, tried crack off this girl. I was 17. I tried a pipe. She said to me, if I tried coke, I went, let's try it. And she just brought a crack pipe in and tried, and I tried it. And you, I took a lot of drugs before then. Yeah. Sorry. I was going to ask, like, you know, because I know there was a crack era, yeah, you know, where, where, like, a lot of people didn't really know the effects the of crack. Of it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And, um, yeah, they didn't, even the dealers didn't know, bro, because the dealers that back then would turn the phone off at nine, 10 o'clock. And that's insane, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, 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 Cause like, you know- <laughs> We know now that's yeah, insane, yeah. right? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, deal, but, crack dealers turning the phone off at nine o'clock, like, nah, nah, I'm, I'm getting off, I'm going out and I'm going yeah, to bed. Yeah, yeah, and obviously- yeah. And you're cracked out your head, like, where am I getting Yeah, you, want, you, want your, you need your, you need your yeah, bricks, innit? Yeah, so I used to, me, I used to have to go into like, you know, the gang territory then, you know what I mean? Because that's the only place where you could buy crack then, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I got a taste for going down there. Then when I got addicted to crack, I knew that's where I could make the bit of crack money. But at the same time, it was a very dangerous place because mm. there's lots of men who have got guns and there was a gang war going on, you know? Was that the whole Moss side? Yeah, thing? the Moss side war was going on. So basically there was a, a road no bigger than this room, like separating two housing estates and mm. there was enemies, yeah. murderous enemies for many, many years. <laughs> Which was very unfortunate, you know what I mean? Because most of them were friends. Yeah. Uh, most of them grew up as friends as well. Um, but, you know, just a gang, like, you had to take sides kind of thing, do you know what I mean? Yeah, So yeah. a lot of people go out who shouldn't have gone, you know, and a lot of regrets over the, the killings and the shootings, you know? I got shot myself, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, you got shot yourself? Yeah, man, my friend shot me, man. He could have killed me, you know? I know he didn't mean to... What was it over? Crack, you know? Really? Yeah, yeah, I just... My guy... Uh, Give me crack to sell to the man. I knew he was a gunman. My yeah. guy like used to drive around with a gang of them in the cars. 
looking for his enemies, you know what I mean? And yeah. literally they would shoot you, you know what I mean? Yeah. They didn't mess about, you know? Um, so, But he gave you a consignment? Yeah, he gave me bits to sell for him, you know what I mean? Because yeah. he's busy going around shooting people and he's got a parcel and he said, Marv, do you want to do some bits for me? And I've gone, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's gone, don't fuck about us, I'll shoot you, you know? And I was like, nah, I won't. I went and smoked him, didn't I? Smoked a lot. And uh, This is it, man, this is it. That, yeah. You know... Yeah, this yeah. this 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 is it, man. Yeah. It's like you can't you can't play with fire straight away, aren't you? Exactly, and he 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 must not have understood it because you can't give a crack user yeah crack, crack. to hold. It's not in a quantity. I don't you know how can. much he gave you, but yeah, it was like ten twenty pound bits to sell for him. It's just impossible. Yeah, it's, you know what I mean? You know, it's, he's like, give me get me one thirty back, and I was like, yeah, yeah, and I smoked a lot, right? And I I avoided him for a couple of days, and I seen him again. And he said, yo, Marv, you took taking the piss, man. You know what I mean? What happened? And I went, oh, it just all went tits up. You know what I mean? You know the drill. Mm, what was you saying? Like, feds raided you? No, nah, I just or... said I just ended up getting caught up with all the boys, them, all the man, them, and oh, the girls. Oh, you, you just admitted it? Yeah, I just oh, had a smoke yeah, well, to yeah, all. Yeah, I went, yeah. you know what? I've just done it all in. But he knew I was a money maker, you know yeah. what I mean? And he knew I had all the girls who used to come to me. So he knew I had a lot of turnover and money. So he knew he was going to get it. He gave me more crap to sell. said, yeah, get some more. Yeah. Go and get me money now. Yeah. And I went off and smoked a lot again. Again? Yeah. And I knew, I thought, as I was smoking him, I thought, this is stupid. This is crazy. You can't help yourself though. No, nah, like, I couldn't help myself. Yeah. I couldn't help myself. It's like, I can compare that to, to the gambling. Like, That's it? Yeah, exactly. You're like, gambling with your life out of yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah. But, so I've gone go to on. this club now and um, I've, my mate's gone in the club, a man, and I'm in the back of this pirate taxi. That's the guy in the driver's seat. And my mate's gone in the club and some guy's nose, he looks, see me and I get the car and go, ah, rare, rare, oh, you owe rare, rare money for shit. And he's coming, he's come out of the bar and gone, come here, Marvel, I want you, come here. You took the piss and just pulled out this big revolver. Um, what, his, he, his brethren? He pulled out, he, his, his brethren went in and told him I was in the club. Oh, so he's pulled he's came out. out yeah. And he's came out of the club. Yeah. And gone, come here, Marvel, I want you. Call me out the car. Yeah down this little side street, just pulled out this big revolver what he used to roll with. Yeah. And just went, doo, doo. Where, where I did he hit? The I felt the second shot hit my leg uh -huh. and it just went, doosh. You know what I mean? I looked down at a big hole in my trousers and, that, and I thought, oh my God, I've just been shot. shot. Yeah, so I can't remember if it dropped me or not. I think I think it, but it didn't bro miss me tibula and my fibula. I remember him telling yeah. me in the hospital, yeah, you're very lucky, like, you miss your tibula and your fibula. I didn't even know what it meant at first, you know, at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I was like, know. yeah, whatever, yeah. yeah. Um, Fucking hell though, man. I didn't even go to the hospital though when it happened. I went, I drove straight past the hospital. I got my mate, the, what happened is the taxi driver, the pirate taxi driver, when I said to my mate, I've been shot, he's heard it and he's just ran off, opened the door and just ran. Oh uh, yeah, he just cut out. Yeah, he just chucked and I thought, oh my God, I've looked and the keys are in the ignition. I said to my mate, can you drive? Because I could only drive auto. I said, can you drive? He's gone, yeah, yeah. So, so we got we went to drive. So we, instead of going to the hospital at the end of the road, I've just gone, nah, let's go to town, man. I'll go and have a few pipes to calm down, you no know, because my heart yeah. was racing. <laughs> and I was thinking, ah, it's a minor. And like, I thought, I'll just Fun. take my t shirt off and just tie it up, you know, like, and just kind of did, forget did, about did, it. Did, did, did it, did it, it didn't hit no bone, it just went nah, through. It just went, hit, went, went, hit no Do you know, bone. It's, it's funny you said that, yeah. My, same fact to my, my bridging, like, one yeah. time we was like, we was only young. Yeah, and yeah. He, like, you know, we had a madness with, with, these, yeah. with these other kids. Yeah. And they sh he got shot in his leg. Yeah. And he just went straight, straight through, didn't yeah. hit no bone, yeah, it went yeah. straight so through. Is, yeah. And he didn't want to go to hospital either, yeah, like, yeah. because. <laughs> It was just like you got the adrenaline pumping. Yeah, that's it. Do you know yeah, what I, mean? I think because of it, scared to be honest with you. I didn't really want to face it. Yeah, yeah. But luckily, yeah. you know, you can die off that. It can yeah, hit an could, artery yeah, and you yeah. bleed out yeah, within yeah. two minutes, aren't you? Yeah. And yeah. the angle of it as well. I mean, you can see it from there, right? See it there? Yeah, I see it. Yeah, yeah. So he yeah, went yeah. like this. Look, it wasn't that far from me, was it? Yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. It's just know. so lucky how it just missed there. Look, you see it? It's just crazy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Ball, yeah. It just missed the ball. Yeah, and yeah, And behind, yeah. like, don't know it never snapped my leg. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And on the way, and then I'm in this nightclub and I've got my T-shirt tied around my leg. And, like, I've got, because it's bleeding everywhere and my heart's racing. And I'm in this woman's toilet, kind of owning it, smoking mm. on the side of the toilet. Yeah. And my blood's everywhere because my handprints are everywhere. 
And this woman's coming, ah, and there's blood everywhere. And I looked around and thought, shit, man, there's blood everywhere. You know what I mean? It's time the planet to go now, been yeah. pissing everywhere. I thought, I've got to go to the hospital here, man. And on the way, a bouncer, I blagged him for 20 quid for crack for when I got out of the hospital. You know what I mean? Just yeah. mindless, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just... You know, I should have been it's, happy it's, that I've just been, I'm alive. That's what I'm saying. And it's crazy that that was at the forefront of your mind, but that's that's what addiction does, that's isn't it? That's what a crack addiction, yeah, drug yeah. addiction does, isn't it? Yeah. Just makes you for, not worry about anything else. You were just targeted on the drug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know so many people have been killed through the drug as well, through crack, yeah. through robbing and stealing and, you know what I mean? And being, you know, one of my mates got caught on a fence and cut his leg doing a burglary at bang. Drug related. Yeah, yeah, You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, Bled yeah. out on a fence. And just, there's so many times I could have died. Like, I got, um, I got beat. I got a good beating once for um, robbing shots, you know what I mean? Like, robbing punters and that. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, what, you, oh, you robbed a punter, but not... Yeah, I was not... robbing punters. So what was happening was they was driving onto an housing estate in the middle of gang territory and one of the main gangs in Moss Side. Um, and the punters was driving on, and me and my mate was saying, "Yo, do you want what you buying?" And he was like, "Yeah, thinking we were the dealers, and we're just robbing them." Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then the phone in the gang and going, "Oh, we've just come on your estate and been robbed." So we was causing shit, shit right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, "Sweaty man, all wanting to eat food off it." So we caused problems, and one day I'm on this road, and this guy came. It was still see to this day. I seen him last week, and he's gone, Marv. <laughs> Come here, get in, and you needed, man. You wanted. And I thought, oh, what have I done now? You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, what have I done? <laughs> and he's gone, shit, man. You've been robbing shots on the estate, innit, yesterday? And I was like, uh, uh, uh. And he went, you have half, right? So my first few words was, bro, am I going to get shot for it? You know what I mean? Yeah, car, yeah. I know the gang, yeah. innit? The gang, yeah. <laughs> it's happened before. Yeah, yeah, I know the gang, and I'm thinking, yeah. fuck, man, I'm going to get fucking shot. And he said, nah, nah, you're not going to get shot. You're just going to get beaten. You know what I mean? Mm. And it just happened that the guy had just been shot in his head. So he'd survived a shoot into his head. But the geezer that I called yeah, you? Yeah, he, he was beating me. Yeah. He was going to. So, like, the guy who drove me around said, Marv, don't hit, don't try and hit him back because you're in the wrong. Yeah. Just take the beating, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And I've gone on the estate and there's all these masked men there stood there. And he's there with this big English bull terrier looking at pulling on his lead like yeah. he come, what did I tell you what have you been talking about robbing on my estate what do you think you're doing you and I thought shit man he just let him beat me and his son's beating me as well and I took a beating but I was that high on crack I couldn't feel the beating <laughs> you couldn't even feel nah, it nah I was remember consciously thinking I better scream it you know what I mean Word. yeah and <laughs> yeah. I just started going ah <laughs> they're, they're gonna go harder they're you, going yeah. harder they yeah, are yeah. just beating me harder because I'm not doing now and it's near bonfire night and they're setting off those air bomb repeaters as well you know what I mean it's mm. flashbangs going off as well just cause pure havoc and um, luckily one of the kids who was there used to smoke on a sly and as I've got round this corner I've heard him say get him again get him I thought I'm dead I'm on this little entry at the side of this guy's house and I thought I'm dead because mm. the dog they've just put the dog on me again and I'm too weak to walk because I've got bite marks you know it's, it's just gripped me and yeah, locked yeah. on chewed me all up my legs and I can't walk anymore it feels like my legs are going to explode have you ever been bought off a dog? no ever been, oh it's excruciating so if you get stabbed, it's like the pressure, but a dog, mm. they tear at you, don't they? They tear I, at I've your muscle. I've been stabbed a few times. Yeah, so know, but you, the, don't really you feel, feel the pressure of a knife, the knife wound when it's healing. Like you oh, get that pressure, healing, yeah, you get that pressure bad, feeling, yeah, yeah, don't you? Yeah. Like it's, it feels like it's going to burst again. Yeah. And that's what dog bites feel like. They feel like they're going to tear open again, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And I was in agony. And I didn't go to the hospital. I didn't go to the hospital. Nah. Just like all these big scars just start healing, you know what I mean? Slowly healing. Fuck me. Crazy, yeah. mate, when you think about it now. But it's all for the pipe, you know? Just thinking, oh, crack, 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 crack. I mean, a guy stabbed me walking through a park once. I went to the hospital. I seen this big gaping wound this big in my stomach, side of my stomach. Looked down, seen it, thought, wow. And I thought, I'm not dying. There's nothing happening. Like, I'm not coughing blood up or anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't feel painful at all. I went to the MRI, walked to the hospital, went in. Smoking crack in the toilet. The nurse no, is shouting yeah. me like, come on. 
So I've gone, is it going to kill me? She said, no, it's going to kill you. I went, sweet, I'm going. She went, you need it stitching and gluing. I was like, just leave it. And I just left it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I just left it, bro. So, Fuck you know, that's the, it's just the, the moves of a cracker, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I've got a scar on my tongue. Uh, yeah. No, I can see it, yeah, I can yeah. see it there, yeah. I got battered in Blackpool, dipping in a in a bar. I bit my tongue, so I was dipping fighting what? back, pickpocketing. I was with a girl who was oh, a pickpocket, yeah. and I fell asleep, and she's doing her thing, and a bouncer's come on going, hey, mate, you're asleep, get out. Yeah. And I've gone, what, I don't even drink me, not bad. And he's gone, who are you talking to? And I've ended up having a fight with him. But all the other bouncers have come over and battered me and threw me out. Yeah. But they've ripped my jacket off because I'm outside the doors, bit dazed with no top on. But I've just come out of jail, so I'm a bit fit, right? Yeah. And I'm game me, so what, I fight him. Yeah. So I start volleying the doors. I'm like, give me my coat back, I want my jacket now. Yeah. Fuming his 80 quid in a little zip pocket. <laughs> and he's like, they're laughing at me, like, move, go away. And I'm like, ah, ah. and some guy just comes inside me, bang, smack me right in the mouth and just burst my, my tongue. The blood what come out of it was insane, bro. It just bled for weeks, days and days and days. I couldn't lie back, my mouth would fill up with blood. Mm. And I should have just went to the Aussie, got it all sorted out. I just didn't even think straight, do you know what I mean? Yeah, just left yeah. a mad scar to heal, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you know, I could go on and on. I yeah, got no, smacked yeah. with, I got fr my school fractured, robbing a hotel one day. The owners come behind us, I'm smacked with a baseball bat. Mm. And the only way we didn't get away, the only way we got away with the robberies because the girl had put a, put a crying on and said, oh, he tried to rip my knickers. And the, the police said, right, well, arrest you all or de-arrest you all. So we all got de-arrested, right? Yeah. But I'm there with a fractured skull, blacking out like this with a big scar right down my head, a big open wound, and I just left it. And I'm blacking out, literally. I'm falling asleep and I'm feeling like I'm going to fall, you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. No, oh, bro, but that's you, it, man. You've had you've had a mad, mad life. Been through that, G. Been through it. Twenty years as a crackhead. You know what? I don't even know I'm still alive. To be honest with you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You I want to I want to get onto like how you came off it, but not straight yeah. away. If yeah. You're further down. So you know, I did twenty five prison sentences because of it. I was in and out of jail like a yo yo. My graft was going and getting to open cars. Yeah, I was gonna say what what was what would you say? The major crime, like theft of motor vehicles, was theft my crime. Motor vehicles, but what's one? Have you got one that stands out to you that you can talk me through, and then you know, then we can get into that prison sentence. Or... I got nicked for a drug operation in Moss Side in the end. Yeah, got caught on a drug up. Yeah, we was all being filmed for months on end. Yeah, going about our business, you know, getting out of taxis, and the police are doing control buys off us. So every one of us well, for the for the, for the audience, what's control buys? So what they do is they put police undercover police to get out the taxes if the drug buyers purchases and you'll run over like dude do you want anything do you want anything and like yeah i want to why they give you the money you go and buy them the drugs you know i it's basically selling to undercovers basically yeah, yeah selling to undercover police yeah and that's what happened so they did this operation for like nine months operation they called it operation noel yeah um they had 26 of us in the end on it, but we was all banged to rights, all caught for selling to police and whatnot, yeah. do you know what I mean? And um, I was I was already in for another charge at the time. I was already in custody for a robbery, firearm, false imprisonment. Some guy made an allegation, another crackhead move. Yeah. So I'm locked up for one thing. I'm watching the TV and the news has come on that Moss Side's been raided. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm so lucky, mate. I was only there <laughs> two months ago. Yeah. And a month. What, these times you're in jail? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm watching this Granada news that all these doors have been booted in in Moss Side. And I'm thinking, yes, it never caught me. The next day I get called to the office and they have this production order. You've got to go to the police station tomorrow. You're getting charged with drug offence. I was like, no, no way. Yeah. Wounded. So went to the police station. They had the compilation tape video of me getting out of cars, buying drugs, scoring drugs, selling, you know what I mean? Like mm. a, just a compilation tape of us in action. Yeah. yeah? And then um, I had to go guilty in the end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just took the sentence. But yeah, Could drug you related. Could you cast your mind back to when you first went to prison? Um, was it juvenile? Bro, when, I went, when I first went to prison, it was like a horror movie. It was slop out. So you, there was no toilets in your cell. Mm. I went to a prison called Hindley Prison for young offenders. And I walked in the cell and all that was in the cell was a yellow bucket to piss in. Yeah. Right, what stunk. 
a bed frame, no mattress, just the frame of a bed, a double bed frame in the slat corner. The walls was burnt. It, they had writing on them, graffiti, old paint, peeling paint. People had scraped into them. People had tried to wash them down with, like, uh, say, washing up liquid and not done it properly, left stains all over it. Yeah. People had been spitting on the walls and all that, scratching the name in blood. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's blood on the walls and everything. I'm like, the window. These times you're a young offender. With young offender. The window frame was like a, like a community in it itself. There was millipedes on it, centipedes, <laughs> flies, you know, everything was on yeah. there. I, it, it used to fascinate me. So we did that with bang up, because he was no, you didn't used to get exercise. What was the bang up? What was the bang up back then? It was just pure bang up. 20, 20, 23. Yeah, yeah, 23. Um, no exercise, nothing like that. You just got out yourself for a bit. Um, and my days was filled with watching these animals in action on the windowsill and on the windows, you know what yeah. I mean? And you had to slop out. So if you was in a cell with a, with someone and you need a number two, you have got you had to do it in a piece of paper, piece of A4 paper, no. fold it up and pu push it through it, uh, inch squares, you know, on the window, because it's like yeah. a cage on the window. So, because you couldn't leave your poo in the cell all night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sleeping yeah. next to a So was, of it, poo. was there times to slop out like, like, once, like you got banged up at night, you didn't slop out till the next morning. So, so, so people. So you could get banged up at four o'clock. You could get banged up at four, go for dinner, get straight back behind your door, and you're not getting opened up till seven, eight o'clock the next morning. Yeah. So if you're dying for a poo at eight o'clock at night, you can't hold it in all night. Yeah. You'll have to poo and you're pooing at you pushing out of a window no. you know what I mean so you have to squish it all yeah roll it all up oh, all your poo oh that is horrible Stay, be serious and everyone had to do it roll your poo up in A4 paper and squeeze it out the window like in tubes pushing it out yeah what is it is it so, so, but where, where, where are you doing these slops like I'm, I'm, I'm interested in this are, are you what are you just putting the paper on the floor squatting down and, and just yeah yeah that's what you'd have to do yeah, you'd have to just try and shit and hold it in, in your hand like to make like a lot of like whole thing and just shit out no. rapid and just like roll it up and get it out the window so it didn't sting the cell out that is it's horrible mental, isn't it? was was like because i can imagine a lot of fights starting over this was, fights was just crazy mate no, no but i mean oh, oh, over the, oh the slop out over the slop yeah out. yeah did you have like cellmates like the dominant cellmate like bro you can't do a shit while I'm in the cell. Yeah, if, yeah. If well, that's did. what happened, isn't it? People was like, if you've got a cellie and that, you're not like them shit in your cell, are you? Yeah, be like, nah, yeah, don't yeah, you dare yeah, shit yeah, in yeah, here, mate. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? You have to shit on slop out. Yeah, you'd have to hold it in and all that. You'd make your cellie hold it in, you know what I mean? You'd have to time it so you'd shit. You'd force yourself to have a shit so you didn't go behind your door dying for a shit. You know what I'm saying to you? Fuck, you know, and, and I know um, back then, yeah, um, there, there was um, there was no uh, electricity on, well, not le electricity. This is radio. You had radio, battery radio, no electric, no TV, nothing. You had batteries, radios, called ramblers, all little box radios because you couldn't have a big stereo. You know what I mean? Mm. And uh, only like people like the cleaners or the main boys would get little extras. You know what I mean? But I used to get bits of weed on my visit off my baby mum. Yeah. Yeah. Because I used to be a weed, I used to be a drug dealer, weed trips, pills, weed trips, um, tri weed trips and uh, uh, weed trips and pills. What are trips? Uh, LSD. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, as in like trippy, yeah, trippy yeah, drugs. Yeah. So yeah. I'd be selling them. So when I went to jail, I was still kind of on and off with my girlfriend and she was been giving me bits of weed up on a visit. Yeah. And I didn't know anything about plugging, right? So I've gone on this visit one day, she's brought me like a an eight foot three and a half grams of solid hash in it. Yeah. Hash, yeah. little square to high. And I've pushed it down my trousers, pushed it like that, and made sure it, like, proper pushed it. Yeah. I'm gone, took a strip search, actually. You used to have to squat and everything, so I had to make sure it was pushed right there. But I didn't know about plugging or anything. Got back to my cell. My cellmate banged on, talked to me through the pipe, said, yo, man, have you got your thing? He said, yeah, one minute, I'll get it out now. So, like, I went to get it like this, and my ass cheek's gone. Like, nah! gone yo i think i've lost it searched myself took all my clothes inside oh, out it's, it's like gone. falling out yeah, yeah yeah so wounded everyone's like nah you're lying my mates was like you're lying i'm saying serious I've lost gone yeah so four hours of that yeah you can imagine we're yeah. like i was nearly crying i was yeah. in my cell just nearly crying bro yeah, and i just yeah. thought okay i'm just gonna go to the toilet i just went to have a poo yeah just about to flush the chain and i seen the, the thing on the no. top of the toilet <laughs> flowing bubbling in the water and i just thought i was loosening it i just went, <laughs> I'm 
<laughs> you just dived it. Yeah, got it. I was like, I found it. I plugged it. I didn't even know what plugging was. I was like, wow. Fucking hell, I pushed it that far. It had gone up my bum hole, you know what I mean? Fucking you know, hell, you didn't even realise. <laughs> didn't, didn't even realise. Didn't, didn't even notice it. Didn't even notice. Then I knew what plugging was. Then I was thinking, wow. You know, you can slot things, man. And you know what I mean? You can put little bits up there, you know what I mean? And yeah. then in the end, it was like people was getting, you know, as you know, phones started coming in and people started like putting everything up there. Do you know what I mean? But that wasn't yeah. for me all but, that. Yeah, before phones and that, yeah. Was you, so was you in, when when did the transition happen? Yeah, like, I was when they in started with all in. I was in when everything started, you know. It's funny TVs, when phones started. Yeah, phones. TVs came. Toilets. Yeah. <laughs> Toilets, yeah, it slop out, stopped, yeah, and then it was like toilets. The strange way is Riot kind of did that. Do you know yeah, what no, I mean? Yeah, no, I saw that it was just they 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 rioted and they had to yeah, switch it all up. Yeah, they had to but, switch it up. Yeah. Look, um, what, what, what? Do you think going back to slop outs and all of this? Do, do you think that's much much harder, bird? Much harder, much harder. Do you think the prisoners are worse? I think if they wanted to try and fix it. I don't know. It's a bit controversial, so you know what? I wouldn't really go there. But you know what? They treat you very, very good in prison, put it that way, don't they? So it's not really... There's no deterrent prison, is it, at the moment? It's only well, your freedom for, what you lose. Exactly, but then you've just said it's only your freedom. Now but, that's everything. But I know that's, that's that. But not everything. for everyone, it is. But not for everyone, yeah, that's exactly. What I'm so saying. I used to say that... That's what I'm saying. I used, to, I used to scream this year, like, people think that prison is meant to be... Like you said, slop parts, yeah. you've got nothing to do, like yeah, basically yeah. block, yeah, because that's yeah, how I understand yeah. block to be, yeah, 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 yeah. without the slop parts yeah. or whatever. Like, but people just expect you to be in, in, but I don't think that makes you a better person. I think no. that just makes you more pissed, if anything. Like, if, yeah. any, if anything, I would I, I, I would come out a worse person than maybe if I had a bit of uh, rehabilitation. And like, I, yeah. I think when I say, um, when, when some, I would say when you go to prison, the punishment is losing your liberty. Yeah. You know, you don't, if you, if you've got yeah. loved ones and that, if you you've got family, you then you lose, yeah. you miss it, don't you? Yeah. You, 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 but some people haven't got that. You? Yeah. Some people ain't got that. A lot that. of people haven't got that. No, like, no. Like I never had that. You know, I was disowned off my family. So what did I have to lose by going to back and forth to of, prison? Of course. But then all my you, mates was in prison, bro. I'd go on the wing and everyone would be banging, yo, Miles, back, yo, buzzing. Yeah. No, no. And I, I'd be like, feel like kind of like at home. wanted. Yeah. 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 No. Wanted, I, I, man. I, I get that, but... Like, yeah, back on the wing with that, all the boys, that's like, fuck it. That's like, that's a mirage, bro. Like, that's not real, bro. No, it's, that's it's, true. Because yeah, behind it's, your door on your own, you're still sad. Yeah, you're still you're, upset. You're, you're still you're, devastated. You're pissed, that, yeah, like. you're, you're buying yeah. your door. You can, be out, you can be out here free. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You can be... Obviously, yeah. your boys might be in jail, yeah, but... Yeah. But when you're away, though, to be fair, you you do trick yourself and you think, I would just literally lie down in the road and just be happy as Larry. Yeah. Never touch anything in my life again. But the minute you get out, you forget about everything, everything you have yeah. done right at the gate. Yeah. <laughs> like I talk about it in my book, I say that, right? That's so, so true, yeah. My, yeah. One of my sentences, I swore I was never going to touch crack. Yeah. Never, ever, ever was going to touch it again. I'd realise it ruined my life. It did this, this, da, 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 and I swear to you now. The minute they gave me that cash money on that discharge, you know, that £44 yeah, four, pound discharge. Yeah, yeah. I think it's £60 pound now, £70. Yeah, pound. well, that £44 pound or something. They put that money in my hand and I just seen that money as crack. I just thought, <laughs> there these two of the biggest bones going, G. <laughs> £44, pound, that is £1 pound onto that, is half a teeth. Yeah. I can get boulders for that. That's yeah. all I thought. Big £45, pound, man, I'm buzzing. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, that's yeah. what I did straight away, the minute. You know what I mean? But what actually, so like, what actually what actually stopped what, what what how did you how did you switch it around what actually stopped you from doing all of that okay so i'm gonna so, get more into your prison life but so I, I was I'm just curious. As, as you know like drug dealers try and make money in it they try and expand the business as much as possible so when i first first started smoking crack there wasn't really ways you could add to the cocaine right so if you had 28 grams of cocaine and the cocaine wasn't that good when you turn it into crack, you would lose seven, eight grams of it. Do you know what yeah, I mean? If it's so, shit, yeah. Well, so more time would, anyways, yeah. Yeah, so then, but now they've got additives. So if you've got, if you've got um, an ounce of cocaine, you can turn that into four ounces of crack. Mm. But before you couldn't. Yeah, yeah. You'd only lose if the cocaine was shit. So the crack was very, very strong, obviously, yeah, right? Yeah. And then over the years, they found ways of adding mix into it and making it longer. So. Yeah. 
through that 20 years of me smoking crack, it went from 10, 10 crack to 2, 10 crack. Rubbish, yeah, 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 basically. Yeah. Yeah. And I used to sit there and think, this crack shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've been kidding myself thinking it was good. Yeah. Putting bigger and bigger 10 pound piece on and you won't feel it like you used to before. And that was playing on my mind a lot. I was thinking it's gone shit, you know what I mean? And I was trying to push that onto myself to get myself clean. And it kind of helped in a way because I thought to myself, I'm wasting my money, you know what I mean? I didn't want to waste my money. What I could have done is just bought cocaine and washed it myself. But a crackhead doesn't think like that. Mm. A crackhead will just go and buy a single crack, you know yeah, what I mean? Just yeah, buy, yeah. buy, buy, buy. So I get, I got to the point where I was thinking, the crack got that shit. I'm just wasting my money. I'm going to jail for nonsense. You know what I mean? And I had my girlfriend, who's a straight member, telling me, "Marv, you know, you're going to jail there. You? You're just going for stupidness, and you know, I'm missing you that much and that. And you know what I mean? You're not there. And um, I was right. She was right. I was thinking the crack is rubbish and. I'm What's the point? Up here yeah. and my life's ruining now. It's yeah. ruining my life. And literally, there was times where she'd take me to Narcotics Anonymous and I would go and smoke crack in the toilets, which now looking back, it was ruthless of me, you know what I mean? But it was the only way, way a place I could smoke crack without her getting on it. So I'd go and sit in the toilet and smoke crack in Narcotics Anonymous and then go and stay, sit in the room and say, yeah, I'm a day clean, you know, and I'm like, yeah, it's mm. my first day trying to get clean today, you know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone like, congratulations, yeah. 45 minutes clean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, you thought, you know, it's just a joke, you know, I wasn't taking it serious, you know what I mean? And then um, I went to a drug rehab and when I got there, it was like a overnight thing, few night thing. I got there, I think the drug team set me up to put me on it. And I'm sat in this room, I'm supposed to be staying there a few days, and this girl's come in the room, this guy and this girl, and went, what are you having tonight? And I went, what do you mean? And I went, well, I, one of us jumped the fence, every the wall, out the back to go and score, what are you having? And I'm like, I've come here for the rehab. Yeah. And like, nah, this is not the rehab to come if you want to get clean, you know what I mean? We're all users, like, type mm. thing. So I phoned my missus up and I said, get me out of here, and I left the same day, you know what I mean? I had to travel home, but then... The Spice came on the scene. Yeah. And oh, so you, what you've been... Because Spice has been about probably, I'd say, from... 2012. Oh, I, I would have said 2000. It was in D-Cats earlier than that. Like, yeah, it was yeah, you're right. You are yeah. absolutely right. Yeah, it yeah. hit D-Cats for a bit, didn't it, yeah, first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so the guy who I got it off came from a D-Cat. And he was like a bumpkin guy, yeah. So we want a main town guy, you know what I mean? He was like a bumpkin guy. And yeah. um, he kind of flooded the he flooded the wing with it and none of us knew what it was yeah yeah it was introduced like it's just like it's it's, it's synthetic weed, it? weed it was synthetic synthetic weed. 700 times stronger than weed it's nothing it? like weed yeah it's 700 yeah. times stronger on them scales what they do you know word yeah so I, it's 700 times stronger that, yeah. yeah so forget it's synthetic weed it is not synthetic weed all right but the guy was having it selling it like yeah it's fake weed it's you know what i mean it's this new drug and that and there was people putting loads in a spliff, bro, and it was sending them looper. Yeah. Was, like losing Zomb it. Zombie, zombie. Yeah, drug, my mates, I was, people was having it. And I was opening the flap of the door behind the door and I'm looking at them and they're just twisted on the floor, you know what I mean? Or so I sleep in their own sick or something. And I was like, wow, what is going on, yeah? Mm. I've opened my mate's flap one day and he's like, yo, let me get this web at you. And it's like this with his hands thinking he's Spider Man and he's on the floor and he's pissed <laughs> like that, trying to swimming and thinking wow so my mate who i was in with I was in would, with you, would, you that, would you say it was worse than crack worse than crack bro worse oh that caused more problems than crack that did yeah i was in with a scouser and this scouser used to get bits on his visits right and he was a safe as fuck guy and he used to say to me he said to me marv don't smash it like all these kids on the wing are doing don't start putting loads in just go easy with it you know what i mean so I put some in, I put some in a roll of tobacco and I've had a few drags of it and I felt like Terminator. I felt like all oh, my body had just switched on like, because my arms were tingling from my fingertips. Mm. Gives you this weird tingle. And it was going all the way up to my body and I was, it was like I was alive. Like mm. I felt like I was like this machine alive. And I'm lying there thinking this is one of the strongest things I've ever had in my life, you know what I mean? And I tried everything. I've been so, addicted to everything I've had. I've tried. Off the back of the spice thing, yeah, I know um 
I've I've done a lot of bird myself, yeah. You have. Um and I know the spice culture. Yeah. And I know you mentioned hits and that. Yeah, man. Have you, have you ever done a hit for spice? Yeah, I was doing hits and stuff, yeah. I was a bit ruthless. Could you, could you, to be could you, fair. Could you explain to the people what a hit is? Yeah, so you're doing a hit, you you um uh, drawing blood on somebody like a all right, though. So one time example, I'll give you an example. Mm. There was a young guy who came to me and said, Marv, you do hits in it. I said, yeah. He said, right. I get a bit of weed on my visits. I'm going to literally give you half of my weed if you go and do a hit on the chip guy on the server. Mm. So I said, the why? Guy what's that does up? chips, yeah. Yeah. So I said, why? What's up? He said, every time I go through the server, the guy is giving me half a mark of chip. This guy's only a little guy, bear mm. in mind. Small little blonde guy, little skinny guy. He's giving stitching me up on the chips every single time. Mm. And I'm asking him for more. He's fucking me off, yeah. So I said, all right, I'll sort it out for you. And um, so the Saturday morning come and I've gone into the cell. I've tapped him on his shoulder. Well, I threw his pad mate out, get out. I've tapped him on his shoulder. Give him a crack. Mm. Just give him a little crack to wake him up. And said, right, you're stitching everyone up with the chips. Mm. Fucking deal with deal with everyone equal. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Just because he's small, he's skinner, you can't. Because what was happening? He was giving his mate loads. Yeah, and, and him like a little this, snide yeah. serving, and he's going, "Yeah, mate, he's going, move along." You know what I mean? And he felt a cunt, this kid. So uh, I ended up. The guy went, "Yeah, man, I swear, I'll sort it out." And then the chip, the chip, there he was like, "Check my chips, man! Look, man, a fucking big pile of <laughs> chips!" Like, the, yeah, yeah. filled up the plates and that. Kind of big pile of chips, man. Like, yeah. But basically, <laughs> chip hits are like um, wages. You know, someone is getting a lot you're of a debt. Hit, you're a hit man, basically. Yeah, in, I'm in, a hit man. Yeah. Yeah. Someone is getting a lot of debt, and um, do you know what? Though, to be fair, I had my friends who were I'd know people who was in debt, so I'd have to do a hit on a mate of mine. You done you know a hit I mean? on your mate? I'd have to do hits on mates, yeah. No. Like, and I'd smoke some of the parcel with them and this and that. Do you know what I mean? Nah. Hey, wait, give me a scenario so I'd have about to, yeah, where, you, where you've had to do so it. Your, it. Your so my next door neighbour, my next door neighbour, had uh, he was minding a parcel for someone, and um, he was a good kid as well. He was minding a parcel for someone. The kid got shipped out on a security move, so the. The the kid whose parcels it was got shipped out on a security move. So the guy tried to claim the parcel. So the guy, after three or four days, had not heard of anything, thought that he was never, the shout had gone, you know, he'd gone and all that. But, he, you know, he didn't realise mobile phones are everywhere. Yeah. So he kept it quiet for a bit and then he ended up giving it, swapping it for bits of B to everyone, the weed. Mm, yeah. And then the call come back then, yeah, go and get that, that parcel off, blah, blah. And it was my next door neighbour, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the guy was fuming at him. He was like, yeah, you took the piss. I give you that. And I was giving you every day and you ended up selling, giving my weed away for bits and all that. And um, I didn't actually do the hit. It was my mate of mine who went in and gave him a crack and that. And Because um, he just wanted to see blood, you know what I mean? Yeah. But what we did is, instead of like beating him to a pulp, you just pop him over the eye. Yeah. Like you're doing rapses, like that. Yeah, so yeah, I'd yeah. literally say to them, my mate of mine, yo, you old three ton. You want to see blood? Like, I shouldn't be slaughtered in there. Let's just do a quick blood shot yeah, now. Yeah, just so they're happy. Just so they're happy and you're done, you know what I mean? Because yeah. he's always free to but the drugs, what he's been given are the 10 quid's worth, you know what I mean? Yeah. The bottom line is the worth, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, like, he's just one of them. I want to see blood. I want to see his blood for taking the piss out of me. And that was that, do you know what I mean? But I've yeah. done hot water and sugar hits before now, you know? And um, you're getting into dangerous territory then. But what I would do is I would allow the water to... To, to cool a little bit before I did it because I didn't want to scold anyone. Mm. If you throw hot water and sugar at someone, it peels them. Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? But you throw cool hot water and sugar at someone and it's scaring them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what I'd do. I'd make sure the water was cool, you know, so the redness would be there and he'd scream and run. For, for those that, for those that probably obviously don't understand the whole prison thing, why, why do people put sugar in hot water? And I'm not saying yourself. Or you yeah, to, you to, it. to scold people for life, in it to damage people quickly. You know, yeah. it's to um, it makes it stick to your skin. Yeah, it makes the hot water. It makes the sugar stick to your skin. Yeah, so it peels your skin, and it does actually peel it. 
because prison people think prison's a little playground you know it ain't so, no yeah, little this is this is why yeah, it's very important that i i, I speak about these things because mm. I, I i agree with you people think prison's a playground <laughs> they think it's easy oh, oh it's a holiday camp that's no, what not. people try to um, yeah. think it as but it's, it's not yeah i say it's a holiday camp but in the respect that me and my as a drug addict it's like a holiday camp for me because there's that much drugs in there and i was a drug dealer so mm. You'd see a boy who's five foot six, who's getting parcels. His mates are fat on the street. He's in a he's a gang member, yeah. but he ain't big enough and stock enough to demanding wages and all the canteens yeah. off everyone. So he'd say to me, "Marv, do you want to do the work for me?" You know what yeah. I mean? And I'd be going to all the users saying, "There's two bits there. You owe twenty quid canteen. Here's a piece of paper with a list of things I want. Mm. Make sure you put it on your canteen sheet." I'd be the one who had to go around. And then when it was canteen day, I'd have to send a guy to go and get all the canteens and I'd put them all under my bed. Then the, the drug dealer would send a run around to collect all the canteens and put them all over to ease, you know what I mean? To share mm. them up between them all. Thank so yeah, it was a lot of work, you know what I mean? Uh, so I'd earn a lot of wages for doing it as well, you know? Yeah, you yeah. Know, so. Off the back of that quickly, what was um, the worst injury you've seen in prison? I know you've done a lot of bird. I've seen a lot. I've seen people dead in prison. I've watched... I watched the guy with a, a micro penis have an heart attack one Sunday afternoon. Like he was banging on the door, screaming, bro. This guy was screaming, but this guy had the tiniest penis you have ever seen how in your you know, life. How do you know his penis was Well, it was a communal shower, so you, uh, literally there was a door to the showers and it was just like, there was no, no doors in the showers. Yeah. It was just, you know, you walked in and it was just four showers all lined up. And I've walked in one day and I thought he had no penis at first. Yeah, I look, I'm like, where's his dick? Like, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I couldn't see his dick. I'm like, is this a woman? Yeah, nah, little Italian. Let's, I mean, it, let's skip from the penis, man. What, what, right. what, what happened though? Like, all right. What, so yeah. anyway, yeah, the guy had a heart attack. Um, one day he's banging on the door, going, "Hey, help, help!" The heart's going, and we're all shouting, going, "Yeah, someone get some money or help him!" You know what I mean? And he ended up having a heart attack and dying in he the died. cell. But yeah, the, the violence I've seen yeah, in prison, Yeah, like the worst bro, of violence you saw. Well, one day I seen a guy come on the wing and everyone was saying he was a nonce, you know what I mean? Once that shout goes round, you're a nonce. It doesn't matter if you are or not. Mm. Pete, someone will go and smash your head in, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, For and sport, went, yeah. Yeah, and it went round that this guy was a nonce. And he, I think he was though. Uh, I think he'd just been slipped on because a lot of him get slipped into the net like on the sly, yeah. sex offenders try and live normal, normal location and say they're in, say they're in for driving yeah, or yeah. drug offences or something and they're yeah. not. But the screws know they're not and the screws don't really tell you but then again, screws are human beings, aren't they? Yeah. Some screws can't resist telling you. Screws have told me before. I've known yeah. it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, it's happened to me in Wales, you know, yeah. young offenders. We've been told before, he's a paedophile, unlocked and does go and batter him, you know what I mean? It's yeah. happened before. Yeah, of course. But yeah. What, what, he, saying, what he got? No, like the worst injury, like the worst. Oh yeah, so this guy, man, he went to his cell, and the nonce. Yeah, the nonce, and he had, he smashed a sink with his head. The sinks was um, like a marble stuff. It was like the, in Forest Bank. It's like a, it's like a marble. What is that material? Smashed. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a it's a hard material. Yeah, it was I don't, smashed. Yeah. I walked yeah. in. There was black blood everywhere. It's really difficult to smash them. Yeah, that's what well. I thought, G. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, what did they do to this guy in this cell? You know, like, obviously, he's been smashed up and they've took him out. And before they locked the, the cell up and put tape on it, mm. you know, for forensic, I looked in and it was just black blood all over the toilet and the sink, little small sink was cracked off. And I thought, wow. You know mm. what I mean? And, like, they did went to town on him. Yeah. But I watched the guy get his head squashed in a door. Some guy from Wolverhampton was a drug dealer and... He was waiting for his canteen to come in and one of the lads had gone to him and said, mate, I've not got your canteen. And he's gone, what, you took the piss and banged him. And he's dropped to the floor, but as he, as he fell on the floor, he went to push the door and crush his head on the floor. Oh, no. And he's had it the, between the two doors, bang, and his head popped, bro, yeah. killed him. No way, yeah. yeah the guy yeah, got yeah. a murder charge as well for you it. Know, we got his head squished in the door. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know what? Um, yeah, squished I've in got, the door. I've got an interview. Um, I might just, I'm going to put it in this segment right now. Yeah. I'm going to put it in this segment right now, yeah, where uh, an IPP guy, yeah. he, he describes that very same thing where the guy got, he got killed, he, he gets his head squished yeah, in the door. Yeah, it probably might got, be the same incident. So you know? I, re I reckon it would be the uh, would same be. incident. Mm -hmm. One second, bro. What, yeah. what time are you on, bro?
Okay. Ja, ja. Ja. Um, um, so, what I want to get to next is um, maybe some more positive things, yeah? What, That's what, it. What, 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 what was you most proud of in, in prison? Um, what was I proud of? Through any of your sentences, like, or did you, did you manage did, to come um, off I drugs? I did a plastering the... course. Oh, yeah? Uh, but I did, it was nine stages to complete the plastering course, nine, like, things, and I did eight of them and got GOAD. That was one of my life regrets back in the day. Oh, no. Um, what does GOAD mean for people that don't know? Good order and discipline. discipline. You get, the block, basically. Yeah, you get took and they just leave you down the block to rot for a month or so, yeah. yeah. So that's what happened there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, the change comes eventually, doesn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? You start wanting the change, don't you? You, you start knowing that your life can become better, do you know what I mean? I'd met a girl, me, and then I'd, that's was, what... Was that what helped you change? I think I think meeting my girlfriend gave me a reason to live, you know what I mean? Because like, that was the first person who ever really cared about me, do you know? Obviously, my yeah. adoptive mum, yeah. God rest her soul. She loved me and my dad, obviously, you know, he loved me in his own way. But, like, that was that old, the, my true, like, real love, you know what I mean? Yeah. That I grabbed onto, you know? And, and it, she was on a drug addict, so she's telling me there's a better life being clean, you know what I mean? I'm saying bollocks, man. I just want to go and smoke crack. Yeah, yeah. And then eventually it started getting into me. There might be a better life, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it yeah. sounds like you've obviously found something to lose, you know, maybe yeah. before you didn't have much to lose. Yeah, I've got a son now, man. That's everything to lose, Oh, uh, yeah. Come, that's you know, what I'm saying. What, 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 four really? years old he is, yeah. Oh, come bonfire on. Bonfire night, baby. Born on bonfire night. Oh, so, was it 25th November? 5th, 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 5th of November, that's 5th it. Of yeah, 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 that's bonfire it. Bonfire night. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Came as a little firework, five past five on the 5th of November by emergency C section, yeah. But he came after 12 years. I was with her 12 years before she got pregnant. Um, she got told she couldn't have kids. Um, so him coming as a little dream just after I found all my birth family as well. Because yeah, I went yeah. searching for the answers in it to yeah. find my birth family. Um, so I was working with an adoption agent to try and find my mum. And then. When I got clean, they said, right, you're ready to find her now. So I was buzzing, I went away and uh, they, she phoned me up and went, yo, come in on Tuesday. Got some news for you, me and my bird are like, yes, she's found me a man finally, my life's gonna change. And I walked in the office and she just went, I'm so sorry, and just passed me my mum's death certificate. She no. Just went, sorry, your mum's gone. I'm so sorry to hear yeah, that, Yeah, and that ruined me, that, you know, that plunged. Um, was that something that you've been longing for? Of course, man. I was yeah. thinking I was meeting my mum again and yeah. everything was going to be rosy and had you, had, this had you, life was going to be different and stuff, you know? Have you? Did you have pictures or anything? Nothing of my mum. Never, ever. The the ado adoption agency had a black and white picture of just two blotches on a piece of paper. You couldn't see who it was or anything. Um, so I had no pictures. I never knew what anyone looked like. And um, it turns out that my mum was Greek Cypriot. Um, and she had loads of sisters and brothers, and she was like the one who kind of fell off the, you know what I mean, into yeah, drugs a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And she never ever got over giving me away. She never married. She never had other kids. Yeah. Um. So when I found out my birth family, like my birth aunties and uncles, they was telling me all stories, and I've got loads of pictures of her. You know what I mean? But every picture I've got of her, she's holding kids. Yeah. Um. So all my Nephew, um, all my cousins, my first cousins, have said to me since that she was really, really nice towards him, you know what I mean? And she was such a nice-hearted person. That makes me feel good, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, yeah, man, she was dead before she was 50, bro, you know what I mean? She just couldn't handle life, innit? Yeah. And, um, like I say, I've seen my dad since, and he's just, uh, I don't really say much about him, but he didn't impress yeah. me at all. He yeah. disappointed me, sorely. Never turning up for a DNA test. What's that about? Yeah, yeah. Hey, what's that about at all? You know, he's yeah. met his son for the first time in like forty years, and like the boy he, he, saying he, he probably can't deal with the responsibility, bro. Like, and, you know, oh, there's what? no, there's no excuse for it, innit? I don't know what he was on, but what disappointed me is he's got kids to another woman. He had ten years after having me, so I've got potentially half brothers and sisters, mm. and they don't want to meet me until they know that that's my dad. Do you know what I mean? So I'm stuck because I'll never know if that's my dad or not now, G. You know what I'm saying? So that's uh -huh. quite disappointing. And yeah. they're up from this side round here somewhere. They're from like London up this oh, side. Oh, is it? Yeah, North London side they're all from, yeah. 
But he's not he's not dead though, is he? No, he's still alive. That's what I mean. I've met him, like he was the one who told me you're lucky he never came to London because yeah. you would have been dead, you know? I do feel like everything happens for a reason though. I do. Yeah. So I do. You know, maybe may, maybe sometimes that's best, yeah, you know. I think. Um So our first meeting. I heard him talking on, he got on the phone, first ever meeting, seen him for the first time ever, he got on the phone and he heard him talking about Valium, Blue Valium. Yeah. And me, just out of conversation piece, I said to him, when he put the phone down, oh, I can buy them on Berry New Road, dirt cheap. Because, you know, the counterfeit yeah. centre of England is Manchester, like the cheetah mill in it. Yeah. Uh, so I just said it in conversation to him, I can get them dirt cheap. And he went, oh, can you, son, get me, son, get me, son. And he never fucking left my head alone for days until I got him. And I got him these tablets and I gave him him. And he was in my auntie's compound. And my auntie's got a big, massive compound near Finsbury Park here. Beautiful mm. gardens and that. And I'm sat there, just me, him and my girlfriend. And he got smashed off these tablets. I could tell he was wavy off him. Mm. This is after a couple of hours of giving him him. And he started telling me that he used to force, force guns to women's heads and force them to take drugs. Is it? And he used to make girls inject heroin and all that. And he's telling me these stories. And I'm thinking, my girlfriend sat next to me and he knows what Kira has been through because he's heard a little bit about Kira's past. And he's saying, yeah, and I used to fucking put guns to women's heads and force them to like, Take heroin. Well, just boasting about it. I don't know what he was doing, G. Mm. Because my girlfriend just got up in disgust. Yeah, of course. And just stormed off. And yeah. he went, Oh, fucking hell. I don't think I really should have said that, should I? And I went, Not really. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I've never physically seen him again since then. But yeah. Yeah, then maybe it's for the best, bro. Doesn't sound like a, it doesn't sound like, you know, yeah, someone but, worth. But you know, in. Uh, Fathers are very important, really, aren't they? No, of course, you know? but, you know... And that is, the history repeats itself, because I've, I've got diff, a there's son. A, there's a difference you between... I kind of fucked off as well. My oldest son, you know what I mean? I've oh, that, that, that's happened to you as well. But that's what I was yeah. going to say. Is there's a difference between maybe birthing a child and actually being a father, being yeah, in, in your child's a life. There's a big difference. difference in that, you know? Yeah, yeah, there's a difference. Because my firstborn, when I had him, I... When she was pregnant... Uh, when she just had the baby, I was a crackhead by then. Just mm. as she was pregnant, just as the baby was born, I was a crackhead. Mm. And I knew I couldn't be a dad, you know what I mean? And I didn't want to be a dad. I didn't want her to get pregnant. She's supposed to be on the pill, you know what I'm saying? Not that's anything against my son, you know. I'm yeah. glad he's produced now, you know. It's meant to be, like you say. But at the time, I didn't want no picnic. I was 17. Oh, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I'd only just moved out of my bedroom at my mum and dad's house, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I didn't want kids. Yeah. I wanted a family, you know, before they had kids. So yeah. getting pregnant kind of pissed me off, do you know what I'm saying? But she did it to kind of, I think she wanted all the family relationship before it. She wanted the perfect life before you, you know, before you get it. But it is what it is. I was an addict by then. I wasn't ready to be a father, do you know what mm. I mean? So I'm getting a second chance at being a dad is a blessing, do you know? Yeah, no, of, of course. And, yeah. you know, and you can, you can, you can do it well this time. I want to get yeah. on to, lastly, uh, like, how have you managed? Because, bro, like, all you've told me is just straight trauma, trauma bro, yeah. like, you know? Yeah. Um, how, how have you managed to really... um? Because I know, look, that's your book there, yeah. Born in Prison. Born in Prison, I yeah. know, I know you're... Um, Born in... It's called... The full title is Born in Prison, How I Survived Shooting, Stabbings, Prison, Crack Addiction, Manchester Gangs and Dog Attacks. That's a gripping that's title. title. <laughs> 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 that's proper gripping. That's but, title, but I'm saying like for anyone else that, you know, may have gone through something similar, may have been addicted yeah. to drugs and, you know, had a like horrible upbringing like yeah. you have. I'll tell you what I can say. I'll tell you what I would say to them. You can change it round at any moment. So self-talk is you having a conversation with the universe. All right. That same voice that you hear, right, when you uh, mm. need to put your bits away when you've had the wee, right, that same one what tells you to put your bits away is the same one what tells you you can change your life in a blink of an eye and that you don't need to be an addict or you don't need to carry all that burden with you around with you, like your baggage. Mm. You know what I mean? You can drop your baggage off, you know? Like, so I use, like, compartmentalisation techniques now, you know, how to lock things off and stuff. So I'll picture, like, a big wardrobe with loads of drawers on it 
and I can pull things out and talk about it and I can put it back, you know? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, right? yeah So yeah. I can put it back and lock it away for another time and that's what I'll do to manage, you know what I mean? And that's how I'll manage. Yeah, no, I, I respect that. And do, do you think that's done now, that part of your life is over now? Yeah, the good parts are living now, innit? I'm living yeah. now, yeah. I don't know how long I'm going to have left, but every day is a blessing, innit? How long ago, because I, I know you said, just quickly... I know you said, like, obviously you was in jail recently when there was Spice and mobile yeah. phones and that. How long ago did you turn your life around? Well, I've not took crack cocaine for 11 years now. Wow, respect. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, That's respect. good, isn't it? No, that's really good, it's man. It's mental, man, yeah. I say that. I think I can't even believe it myself, do you know what I mean? It <laughs> yeah, it was like such a, a big part of your life, isn't it? Yeah, I was an addict for 20 years, yeah. And uh, I don't know how I even stopped it, you know. I just had enough of it, do you know what I mean? But for anyone out there who's just starting sniffing cocaine now, I would give you a very, very, very big warning, a very serious warning that don't touch the pipe, don't smoke free base crack, cocaine, because cocaine and crack cocaine are one of the same thing. Mm. It's one small ingredient that you mix the cocaine with and it mm. turns it into crack. People think it's some different drug, crack and cocaine thing, yeah. it's different. It yeah. ain't it's exactly the same drug. Yeah. You can snort crack as well. You know, a lot of people, a lot of crack dealers will also sell powder cocaine. Yeah. So I know crack dealers who, when the phone goes and someone wants powder, they just literally crush the crack and just sell it as powder, do you know? Yeah. yeah. So you, you can snort crack as well, do you know what I mean? So there's a lot of people out there who don't realise that they're yeah. getting into very, very dangerous territory, you know what I mean? And it could be out the depth. So I'd say take a take notice of your your mind telling you things that mm. if your mind's telling you look this is wrong you know what I mean you need to start listening to yourself a little bit more because yeah. I never listened and I went down everything my own way. Yeah. Do you feel like because I noticed you said earlier um, just now you know you, you know you don't even know how long you got left or whatever. Yeah. Do you feel like it's it, it's it's you've turned your life around too late? Or do you feel like... Could be, you know, could be. Because, you know, they found a, f a brain tumour dead centre on my forehead, you yeah. mm. Every year I've got to get it checked, you know. Um, that could be drug-related. That could be a direct result of taking drugs. They don't know how they come brain tumours, mm. you know. They don't know how they appear. Mm. Um, so that could be one of the knocks on the other took through robbing drugs. That's what I was telling you before mm. about getting a fractured skull, yeah, you know. Yeah. The, the knocks I've had on my head. Yeah. That's why I let my hair grow now because I can't. Shaving's too sensitive. Shavers, you well, know. Yeah. My head's that sore, really. Yeah. Um. So yeah. My bro. Um. Lastly, um, what are you doing yourself now? Every day is a blessing. Um, trying to share my experiences with other people. Um, we're gonna be doing. Got big news coming soon. Like we're gonna be doing some productions and stuff and some other big things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you got the book, obviously. You said got the book, yeah, and a few, few other things in the pipeline. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Kira's looking at writing a book as well because she's got an extraordinary tale. That's your missus. My missus, yeah. She's, yeah. Her tale is quite out there as well. Of course, yeah. And it's yeah. fine. It's going every time she tells it, she gets a million views on it. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. people want to hear I, it. I, I, I've definitely, I'm definitely going to check her out. And yeah. obviously, at the same time, you can, um, we're gonna, we can add all of that into the description. Of I'm gonna add all, yeah. all, all your details in. Kira's videos, yeah, yeah. amazing. I, I add yeah. all your details in the description, and yeah, obviously, yeah. your book. Because how I met her, she was literally just. She was with a guy who got his sister on the game or as, and he used to force women to become prostitutes, you know what I mean? And I seen him with her and went, nah, you ain't getting her on that game, mate. You better fucking leave her alone. Mm. And you that was saved her, yeah. nearly 17 years ago, you know what I mean? I've been with the girl ever since, you know, so her tale is worth listening to, you know? Yeah, I'm definitely going to check it out, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. My bro, thank you for coming down all day You're from welcome. Manchester, man. Thank You're you welcome, for coming Jim. down and telling your story. You're welcome. It's, bro... It's crazy, man. You know, I can't lie. This is one of the, Yeah, I, I know we could have went on a lot longer. I know, yeah. but you arrived late and, you yeah, know, that's it. but obviously... Well, I think if you check out the book, you read the book, tell me what you think then, man. Maybe we could do another part two. Cool, no, man. I think we should anyways. I, I think, think we should we regardless. Should. Yeah, when, when, it, when, when obviously there's more time and whatnot, yeah, I think we definitely should time. regardless. Yeah. But bro, thank you for coming down. You're welcome, man. Um, You're welcome, G. Yeah. Uh, Delinquent Nation, Prison Diaries. Yes. Uh,